And the beginning experience that you have is the experience of dying, which is why it's called the ayahuasca, the vine of death, because it brings you to face to face with the loss of everything that you considered important, your identity, your name, your body, your health, your children, your loved ones, all of it has to be stripped from you. Not that you lose your children or your husband or your wife, but you lose the old belief systems about who they were supposed to be, how they were supposed to live, how they were supposed to love you, how they were supposed to forgive you. You practice deep forgiveness. And as you do so, you go through the process of growing a new body. There are three important elements to a ceremony. The first one is the setting, the place, the Amazon. The second is the shaman, the master that you're working with. And the third is the plant, the plant substances. Ayahuasca, a master plant that penetrates our ego. We have to lower our heads, work with humbleness and with our hearts. We are used to feeling superior to others. So when we become conscious of the plant's message, we quit this state and start working on finding humbleness and the ability to give. We also deal with forgiveness. Often we say, I forgive you. But we don't really feel it in our hearts. We're just saying it. But when we are inside the plant, or in a different state of consciousness, the plant touches our depths, our heart, our emotion. And it connects us with forgiveness. Ayahuasca cannot be prepared in a house. It has to be prepared in the open space without covering the pot. As it boils, it conveys all of its healing power, its energetic potential. And the master who cooks it is fasting and smoking a pipe, blowing its smoke into the pot to give its strength and power. The shamans seem to just embody that richness of Pachamama and they had so much love and so much welcome. And when they spoke about their preparation and how long they had studied and studied the plants and talked with the spirits of the ayahuasca and the spirits of the jungle, it was just, it was so moving. The ayahuasca really has shown me that it's you can as I you can do the talk, you can read all the books, 
but you know, in spirituality it's about experience and it's about personal experience. You can listen to someone else's experience and you can relate to it, you can identify with it, but the experience has to be yours. And that is possibly the biggest gift that ayahuasca has given me is to actually have the opportunity to feel, not just understand. The chemical structure of the ayahuasca is identical to serotonin. Serotonin is a, the most common neurotransmitter in the brain and nervous system. The serotonin analog is called dimethyltryptamine and it comes from a plant known as the chacruna that is mixed with the ayahuasca, which is a vine that grows down from very tall trees. The combination of these two plants creates a synergistic substance because if you take the DMT by itself, it is destroyed in the gut, in the stomach. But the ayahuasca is an MAO inhibitor. It inhibits the production of monoamine oxidase, which allows for the DMT to go through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream, through the blood-brain barrier, and wash the entire brain in neurotransmitters. So what happens during chemically is that you have your entire brain being turned on at the same time. And not only the more primitive brain that operates most commonly, which is what is known as the reptilian brain, which regulates our respiration, our autonomic body functions like heart rate and body temperature, and which is very instinctual. It wants to eat and reproduce. It not only activates the brain on top of that, which is the limbic brain, the brain of the emotions, which is the brain that is ordinarily operating in most humans. And this brain has four fundamental programs that are called the four Fs that are fear, feeding, fighting, and fornicating. So we're able to rise above the need to hoard food, to be gluttonous, the, uh, the need to have companionship so that we don't feel lonely. We rise above the functioning of this Neanderthal brain and are able to access higher brain function. In this case, the neocortex, the new brain. The shaman experiences the voice and the gifts of the medicine plants by going through four steps of their initiation. And this is an initiation that all of us must go through in order to tap into the fullness of our human potential. The first step has to do with the Great Awakening. The Great Awakening has to do with the realization of your mortality, of the fact that you will die. The Great Awakening has to do with the realization that we have been living small and narrow-minded lives.
Ya van a venir. Ahora yo con este tiempo. The plant is a beautiful path, but also delicate. Often people think that the plant or anything that takes us out of habitual consciousness is a drug. And drugs have a negative connotation as something from the outside that is making you feel things that don't belong to you. This is not the case. Ayahuasca is a medicine, and the way to use it is by consuming it and having the experience, not through the intellect. When we act with mental knowledge, it includes fear, and fears don't let us grow. When you experience the plant, your fears dissolve, and you have a clear vision of what's going on and what life is about. When somebody comes to take the plant for the first time, they always fear what will happen to them if they go into this different state of consciousness. Some people call it a space of madness. How will I get out? It's important to trust that the person who is assisting you and giving you the plant will help you overcome these fears. As I already have had this experience, I call my masters and allies to overcome these fears and then to help others get out of their fear and anxiety. Ayahuasca Medico, Ayahuasca Medico, Medico, Medico. Ayahuasca médico, 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 médico. Como puedes ver, as you can see, this act I have just performed protects your body. With the pipe and the tobacco, I blow all the negative energy from your body. I have been. Um, preparing in a way for the last two years to come to the jungle and I really didn't know what to expect but I knew that I was going to come here for some really personal transformation and um, step into a higher place for myself once I got here. The high shamans of the Amazon recognize nine dimensions of consciousness the first three are the dimensions of space that we're familiar with. The first few times you might experience colors, kaleidoscopic visions, and you might not understand much of what that all means. But with time, you realize that everything has a meaning. Everything that is shown to you has a meaning. And also with time, you learn to hear the voices behind the medicine. One of the main voices is the voice of the ayahuasca. Standing here and embraced in the energy of the Shiwawako tree, the tallest tree in the jungle. It's a magnetic tree. It actually has iron in the wood. Such a marvelous thing. So many marvelous plants here in this beautiful jungle. The Shiwawako, Lupuna. Lupuna is the, is the feminine version of this tree. Such a beautiful, magical place, full of life. All the plants here have a way of nourishing some part of us. It's full of medicine, 
I've learned that there's medicine to, to regrow your skin. I've learned that there's medicine to cure various things. Just so much beautiful knowledge here that, that the indigenous people have, and they're so willing to share it with us. The ayahuasca showed me incredible things um, in terms of the fabric of space-time, which was such a vision, such a revelation, such a gift. I was shown um, life evolving uh, from the Amazon, from the Earth, and I was shown at all levels, at the microscopic level, right up through trees to reptiles. It was a beautiful vision of evolution taking place. Our more primitive Neanderthal brain operates on the basis of belief. It is the brain of religion. Our more recent neocortex is the brain of science and spirituality. The primitive brain has set beliefs about the way that the world and reality works. And these beliefs become self-fulfilling prophecies. These are beliefs that we acquired in our infancy about the nature of love, of scarcity, of abundance, of safety in the world, of intimacy. They were not able to heal. These beliefs were installed in neural networks in our limbic brain, in a region in the brain known as the hippocampus. Because neurons that fire together wire together. And it's very difficult to rewire the brain simply by changing our minds, by changing the way we think about something. During the jungle ceremonies, what happens is that we activate the entire brain and we're able to override these very primitive neural networks, these information superhighways that keep us experiencing the world the same way over and over again. And when we do so, we're able to break out of the grip of this Neanderthal brain and experience illumination, enlightenment, samadhi. This is a very seductive aspect of the ayahuasca ceremony, is that it's tremendously insightful. The role of the shaman is to help the individual integrate, bring that insight back into their lives and into the world so that they can grow corn with it, so that it can be practical, so that it's not simply a revelation, but so that the shamans identify dimensions or levels that they work with, which are really progressively more subtle brain states that we're able to access. So to come and be in their presence and meet the shaman was wonderful and to hear their stories of how they have become masters of the ayahuasca ceremony was beautiful and to be in their presence and work with such beautiful people who know the plant medicine so well, who live the plant medicine was um, an amazing experience. When I came the first time I have gone through a very sad period, period of my life and the jungle showed me the way back to joy, happiness, in a way, the way back to the garden, to the mother, to the sacred feminine. I had gone through a period of feeling disconnected from the divine, from something bigger than me that could hold me. I felt very lonely in my life and when I came here, the jungle gave me back sweetness, kindness, and I felt held again for the first time in a long time. The tobacco and the pipe defend you. 
or they can be your source of investigation. When there is a negative energy, you inhale the smoke and then exhale like rejecting something you don't want, like defending yourself. The tobacco works hand in hand with Dr. Ayahuasca. It is compatible with all doctors, all spirits, all the main elements. The tobacco is multiple and very necessary for all kinds of healing, either for health, luck, work, finances, or love. The fourth is the dimension of time. When the shaman discovers sacred time, he or she is able to journey to the past to heal events that may have occurred 2,000 years ago in your life. She is able to journey into the future to help you select a more desirable destiny. I have lost already my sense of time, my normal sense of time. It's like diving into this uh, world and feeling, feeling connected with uh, all of this. Everybody should always be evaluated before the ayahuasca process. If the person has a strong trauma or is taking antidepressants or has a chronic disease or cancer or heart problems, this has to be discussed previously to avoid any further problems. I usually administer the plant very moderately so that people can feel confident, feel how it enters their bodies, feel their emotions and mind, and not feel blocked. This way, little by little, people feel they are moving forwards and can see what's troubling them. One of the early steps is the awakening of the right hemisphere of the brain. It's associated with our intuition. It's what we tap into when we have hunches, insights, intuitions about something. Well, when you awaken this brain, you awaken the voices of all of nature. Then we get the corpus callosum involved, which is that bridge between the left and the right brain hemisphere, between the scientific brain and the intuitive brain. And we are able to experience the first stages of illumination of whole brain thinking. Initiation is what life brings you to. It's not what you do in the Amazon. Your initiation happens with your lover, with your partner, with your work, with, in your home. It's life brings you to it. Love brings you to it. Sometimes we're brought to initiation through crisis, through health crisis, or an accident even. Everything here, in a way, co-create how the jungle uh, grow. It's so full of life force. Just to be in the jungle breathing, it fills me with, with light and with healing. 
And part of my journey here this time is to, to work with the medicine plant of ayahuasca. And last, last time I had a really great healing experience in the physical of an injury that I have had. So I went back this time um, not really knowing what the plant will bring me. The tobacco is an important element of protection. If the person is going through a difficult moment, tobacco can help him or her step out of this negative space. Blowing it on the crown, the back, the body, it's a ceremony that we use as protection. The tobacco is a master plant that can teach us a lot. So the master herbalist cooks together the chakuruna and the ayahuasca, but always calling on the spirits of the plants, honoring them. So when you take the brew, you're not just taking the chemicals of the plant, you enter communion with the spirits of those plants, and then they give you the access to the spirits of the jungle. At one point, Ayahuasca spoke to me and said, because I said, do I really have to like see all this terrible suffering? And she said, well, this is what you asked for. All of this has to be honored, to honor the sacred feminine. I was like, okay, I understand. Just keep telling me what to do. Show me how to do it. So she just kept showing me all these different things. And then Pachamama came in. And she said, and now we have to give birth to all of this, to all the wounding of the feminine and really honor it because that's what's necessary to uh, really experience the sacred feminine. As you acquire mastery with the plant medicine and the ceremonies, you step into what the shamans refer to as the eighth dimension, as the eighth dimension where you meet luminous beings, the Christ, the Buddha, angels and archangels. At this point, we're beginning to awaken the prefrontal lobes of the brain are associated with visionary thinking, with vision, with the ability to participate in creation, in assisting spirit in creating the world. And you begin, of course, by creating your own world, by creating peace in your life and your family by creating pure air and pure water around you, that you drink and that you breathe, by creating harmony, by creating beauty in your life, in your family. And then if enough of us are able to embody these states, we're able to create peace and beauty and clean air and clean water for the entire planet. But the manifestation is immediate in your life. I was led to the place that I need to be in order for me to start developing that relationship. Um, and as I said, it was so comfortable. When I started to have the visions, the colors were so so beautiful and, and, and just so soothing and, and nothing uncomfortable about it at all. It was very relaxing. I sat there in, in total bliss, watching and, and feeling my body get lighter and lighter. Um, and, and when I moved past that, I realized that was only the beginning. It was the introduction. Plant in excessive doses can lead a person to trauma, blockage, or shock, so he or she can't move forward. So I work with it in small doses, moderately, feeling what is troubling the person. 
The second step is the great departure, where we leave everything that is familiar to us. This is the step that the Buddha took, that Siddhartha took, when he realized that he could not become an awakened being by living in the comforts of, of his father's palace. He had to go and become a wandering monk, a beggar, until he was able to discover his Buddhahood. Ayahuasca means the vine of death, the rope of death, if you wish. And I realized that it was because it would take you to the death of your ego, the one, the death of that persona that you thought you were. And it takes you through your own death so you can be reborn, so you can experience rebirth. The great departure for the shamans has to do with entering the jungle here or going on your vision quest or going in your training, your apprenticeship. When we learn to say, forgive me for what we've done to the people we've hurt, parents, siblings, friends, people around us, then the weight lifts and you can feel it because all of these things, emotions, psychological problems, materialize and then you vomit. Vomiting is like letting go of everything, guilt, envy, hatred, our ego. All of that goes out and we become freer and can work with forgiveness. The last couple of nights have been reminding me how to let go of the intellect and the ego. So I've always come to an ayahuasca session with a fair amount of trepidation uh, and fear of what was going to happen in the session. And that was mainly because I was using judgment, I was using my mind and wanting to stay in control. I really got an opportunity to observe where my fear was in my body and just to let, to work with the ayahuasca and not try and slow it down or, oh, I don't want to go there. And by working with it, I actually released, I think, lifelong, uh, but you release at a cellular level. You don't just release and, oh, oh, I get it. It's not aha moments for me. It's just releasing and then it lets you fly and fly and fly. You grow a new body, a new luminous body. The shamans in the Amazon speak of this as the jaguar body. As the jaguar body that is able to step between this world, the physical world, and the world of spirit. You know the way back to the world of spirit. You're no longer bound to matter. You're no longer bound to time. You're no longer haunted or stalked by death. <laughs> And then we want to go back into the palace to have everything be okay again. But we know it isn't. And we have to go through the great departure. When we hear the call from spirit, we're generally too busy. We don't have enough time or enough money or enough sleep. Or the children are not grown up yet. So when we hear the calling, we go, ah. 
you know, almost. Give me another year. And then the calling gets louder until that life is going to take you there anyway. The fifth dimension is the dream time, where we become conscious of our dreams, of the fact that we're dreaming all the time. And you are able to be fully awake even while asleep, instead of being fully asleep even while awake, like most of us are. One time I was taken throughout my teenage years, all of those years when maybe I drank a little too much, maybe I didn't respect myself because I didn't have a role model um, that taught me how to be a woman, a graceful woman of elegance. So I was shown all of the times that I did dishonor myself, that I disrespected myself, when I compromised myself my soul, my values. There I was, clean and pure again from those years. But still, the girl that I had compromised had left. So after the cleanse, she came. It was a beautiful 17-year-old girl that liked to dance and sing and that helped me recover all of my joy. Me, During ayahuasca, we flood the brain with neurotransmitters and awaken higher brain capabilities. But not only that, what happens also is that we're able to grow new brain cells, four fundamental programs of fear, of feeding, of hoarding, of fighting, of violence, of predatory sexuality, are no longer in the driver's seat. They're no longer guiding in our experience. Instead, we're able to understand that everything that we conceived of before as a problem holds within it tremendous possibility for wisdom and learning, tremendous opportunity. You look at the same things everybody else looks at and you see something different. This is by far the most beautiful work I've ever done. It's uh, in my quest to work with the healing arts, I've always looked for the one thing that would help people the most. When somebody comes to me and they have a, a bad back or, you know, whatever the situation is, I always, I've always looked for the thing that would send them home feeling better. Not necessarily so they have to come back and then come back and come back again but to, to actually go home knowing that everything is okay. The third step are the challenges, the tests. You must come to meet your fear in order to step beyond fear. You must come to meet the war that rages within you in order to reach a truce and practice peace. The shaman does this by awakening her vision, his vision. And the shamanic vision is possible only when you're willing to look deeply inside yourself, to recognize both your darkness and your light to recognize your ability to heal and your ability to kill, to recognize the fact that you have the power to destroy and the power to create 
and to choose to create, to choose to practice peace, to choose to practice fearlessness in every single one of your actions. It has to do with being here in the jungle and not just have an experience that you can have elsewhere. It's very much uh, a package that uh, brings together um, various elements that uh, help deepen the experience and the understanding of what's uh, really important and essential for not just for myself, uh, but for our work that we were doing in Germany. I had a very good and intense experience. I realized that I have some energetic holes and also inflict them on others. I'm very thankful for being able to realize that. When I saw it, I felt nausea and vomited it. The beauty with the plant medicine is that it takes you really where you need to be, not always where you want to go. And we create such a sacred circle of work, and the plant is opening up our feelings and our visions for, for healing, for places that we need to revisit, or places that we can step into. So it opens us up and cleanses us for all this heaviness that no longer serves us, really. So it's, it's deep healing, very deep work here in the Amazon. The sixth level is the domain of the spiritual beings, of the spirit animals, of the spirit of the jaguar, of the eagle, of the serpent, of the luminous beings that come to you when you call them. And these are not the spirits of the dead. These belong in a much lower domain. These are the spirits of the medicine men and women that have defeated death, that have stepped outside of time and that live in infinity. They come when you summon them to help you to heal. They come to help you to bring vision and they come to help you to bring energy and power to somebody who might be in need. I had an opportunity to step outside of time and go back to a moment just a little before my mother passed away. I remember walking into the house and like I always did, just coming in like, you know, just another day and my mother was was standing in front of me and she kind of collapsed backwards just a little bit thinking that you know she I think she wanted me to hug her and so all this time I've been feeling like that was a missed opportunity to show her my love and so during the ceremony I was actually able to relive that and instead of walking by I embraced her and I held her so sweetly in my arms so that she could feel all of the love and, and all of the gratitude that I have for her. And I really feel like it made a difference. On the way back from the beach, as we were crossing over on the boat, one of my beautiful sisters was leaning her head on my shoulder. I thought she was sleeping. And all of a sudden she looks up at me and she says, John, your mother loves you. In her eyes, 
you're the perfect child. It was a way of validating my whole experience. We are a bridge. We don't cure. We are the bridge of energy that the ayahuasca crosses. We give the person that healing information. And we are also joined by our allies, by the spirits of plants, of our masters, that come to protect us and help us heal the person who is in a fairly critical state at that moment. These allies appear and can be perceived sometimes. They are there to help us with the people's surgery, to help us heal them and extract what is bad in them. So with the allies and with our energy, we call upon the plants and spiritual entities of animals to help us gain strength and assist the person to overcome that state. So a lot of teaching and information that comes. It's not just to go to the beach and have, have that ride. It's really about working our medicine. And as we come to the beach at night, we sit in this sacred circle, we open sacred space. And Panduro, the maestro, he's calling in all his, his spirits and protectors. So it's really, really a safe place to work with him. The seventh realm is the domain of all of the archetypal forces, including the forces of nature, of gravity, of electromagnetism, the great forces that mold and shape our universe. These are the forces that physicists have identified, the four fundamental forces of physics. This is a four-letter code of DNA. These are the archetypal the angels, the archangels that we've referred to throughout history. Everything that exists is God's creation, and my work is based on God. And I think that everything we find in plants was a gift from God, but we have to know how to use it, about what has to be done in dieting and fasting. Dieting has to do with not eating certain things, and fasting has to do with not eating anything. And this is not for a couple of days or a month, but for two or more years in order to become a great master. The voice of the earth, Mother Earth, Pachamama. She's the one that can hold you so you can go deep into her belly and heal those very old wounds. She's the one that can also give you much vitality, energy, fuel to access the upper realms the realms of the heavens. And of course, once you go there, you can meet the voices of the luminous ones. The shamans report that they can speak to the Mother Earth, to the Pachamama that they can talk to the plant, to the ayahuasca, that they can speak to the spirit of the jaguar, that they can talk to the archangels, and they can hear their voices, and their voices respond to any question that they have. If we look at it from the perspective of brain science, in effect, we're activating and awakening the right hemisphere of our new brain of the neocortex. So for those of you that have a longing or calling for the Amazon, come. It's such a beautiful experience of Pachamama, of the feminine of the earth.
The fourth step in initiation is returning back to our homes and our communities with gifts that we're ready and willing to share with others with humility. The gift that the Buddha brought us were the gifts of the Four Noble Truths that is possible to heal suffering. The gifts that Christ brought back to us were the gifts of loving our neighbor like we love ourselves, the practice of compassion, of turning the other cheek. We have to become living examples of who we can become as humans, of who humanity is becoming 10,000 years from now. We can embody that today. But we must bring these gifts back to others. They cannot remain only as personal discoveries and realizations. These are the boons, the great medicine gifts that the shaman brings back to her community. One of the most important voices that you recognize by participating in ceremony will be the voice of Dr. Ayahuasca, to whom you can ask to help you heal anything that you need to heal in your life. And the other very important voice is the voice of the Earth, Mother Earth, Pachamama, who is in a way, the director of the ceremony, the one that always has the last word. When I was in my initiation with a master, diving in the jungle, alone in a cabin, on the ninth day, an entity appeared in a dream in the middle of the night. I felt the spirit coming to me, to my chest, and then it opened it and something came into my body. I woke up abruptly and could feel a huge energy filling that side of my heart, energy to give and share. I felt really happy having acquired the spiritual knowledge and energy, a feeling of the plant and the earth. When I told my master who arrived the following day, he said, you have accepted that the plant comes into you and the plant will work through you when you do your work. You call the spirits of the plant and they will assist you so that you can work with people. The work has become more mature from my perspective, more related not only to your personal adventure, uh, but more to what could we take to the world, back to the world in uh, this time, in this particular time. And I feel very inspired and encouraged to go for what my dreams are and be part of the dreaming the future it's not only a burden, it's a gift and it's a, a blessing. The eighth dimension is the domain where we perceive the matrix of creation, the luminous threads and fibers that make up all of creation. We no longer see objects as solid objects. We perceive them as pure energy. We perceive the essence of water, the essence of earth, of fire, of wind, all as a luminous web that informs the many universes that we live in, we realize that we can interact directly with the matrix of creation, with what physicists refer to as the zero-sum field. In accordance with the capacity of each master, we work in the sixth, seventh, or eighth dimension. When I consider it necessary, I will take more ayahuasca than normal, and I will have access to them. 
if I need to analyze certain things, where to ask for divine help for somebody's sake, a man or a woman. The biggest gift that we can receive from the plant is to be allowed to witness ourselves, to see our inner self, our higher self. The plant allows you to experience dimensions of your interior and your higher self in a very respectful way. Once we find ourselves, when we come back to our common day reality that is not less important, it reminds us of who we really are. Here's the gift that I have received and in talking about it, I shared with you. I bring it back for you too, which is the east direction in the medicine wheel, which is the way of the ego, the way of bringing back gifts to the world, to humanity, because our healing is not complete until we ourselves become healers. It was in another evening of ceremony where I had gone in with my intention was to be shown love and to see what love is and to journey through some of those difficult places that I have going on and to find some answers and some peace with them. And I had a phoenix come into my heart center and clear it out. And I had asked for any unnecessary um, protections and blocks in my heart center to be removed. And this phoenix came in and it dove into my heart chakra and came out and it came back into my heart chakra and it kept going deeper and deeper until it was fully um, cleared out my heart center. And then I had a dialogue with the ayahuasca and she said to me, go ahead and open your heart. And so I opened my heart center and she said, open it even bigger. And I was able to open it bigger. And she said, open yourself even bigger. And I could open bigger. And she just kept encouraging me to continue to open that heart center until it was as big as it could go. And it was beautiful and pink and white and green. And it was, I was so filled with love and gratitude. You have to work with a very pure plant substance, which is very difficult to find these days. There's less and less ayahuasca available in the Amazon. So today in South America, everybody is a shaman and you can buy ayahuasca in the marketplace. But the quality of plant that's available in the marketplace is terrible. It is mixed with other psychoactive substances that actually interfere with the healing of the brain, with the elimination of trauma, with the deactivating of these, of these primal neural networks that keep scripting our reality. So it's very important to know the quality of the plant you work with. In the same way that you can buy $8 wine or wine that costs hundreds of dollars, the quality of the ayahuasca is essential and it should only contain two ingredients. The ayahuasca, the vine, and the chakuruna, which is the one that brings the DMT. It is important to know who is giving you the ayahuasca, the background of the person. Then you can have the trust to offer your energy to transcend and heal. And the plant is not a demon. It is an acknowledgement of the process of healing, of opening, of stepping into a space in which we can feel more comfortable, know ourselves better in order to be better people, better to others and help them, and also to be more stable, more autonomous. We need to have faith in this. 
so that the plant can help us step out of the space in which we are enclosed. We can know ourselves better, lower our minds into the heart and be able to see and feel with our hearts. In the ninth dimension, we recognize that we are the matrix of creation, inseparable from it, that we are every one of its filaments, every one of its threads, that every molecule of creation is also us. Here is where we acquire our godlike, our divine nature, where we're able to dream the world into being, where we can complete the act of creation itself. This is the dimension that the master medicine men and women operate from when they gather to envision the kind of world that our children's children might inherit, the possible world, not the probable world, but the possible world where the rivers are clean, where humanity lives in peace, where we are stewards of this beautiful blue-green planet Earth that we live in. In the jungle, I have recovered my soul. I have cleansed myself from all toxic relationships in my life. I have cleansed myself of all heavy energies like fear, especially fear. I have entered realms of magic. I have even met God. For the shaman, we are a drop of infinite possibility that is coalesced into a body. And they believe that we have nine lifetimes, like the cats do. Not nine different reincarnations. We could have a hundred or a thousand of those. But we have a singular opportunity in this lifetime to attain infinity. This is how it works. When we die, we're like a drop of consciousness that returns back to the great pool of consciousness. When it does so, it can lose its identity as a drop. It's impossible to find that drop in this glass. The task of the shaman is to learn how to get out of this life alive so that when we return back to this great pool of consciousness, there's someone there to experience it. We never lose our individuality. Our consciousness is unshakable. It cannot even be disturbed by death. The Buddha was not the Buddha until he brought back his gifts. Christ was not the Christ until he brought back his teaching. The shaman is not a shaman until she brings back her, her discipline, her practice. And that becomes her gifts. The gift of having seen the, through the eyes of God is a, is a beautiful one, but it's not difficult enough. So bring back a gift that's for you and that'll be a gift for others. One of the greatest things that we can give is ourselves, to others, of ourselves. A little bit of time, a little bit of love, a little bit of attention, of caring, of kindness. And whatever gift you choose to bring back for yourself tonight, be ready to turn it into your yoga.
Oh, that, oh. 